Welcome to this video on strategic planning and today we are going to be speaking about congregational mission assessment also known as the CMA process and this is all based on the writings of Tom Bandy. My name is Pablo Jimenez and I am going to be your instructor for this video. In our previous videos we studied the meaning of concepts such as vision and mission. We also saw two models of church development and growth, namely the declining church and the thriving church. In this occasion, we turn our sight to strategic planning, a key topic for any church revitalization plan. And as our previous video and our next video is, all of this is based on a book by Tom Bandy called Moving Off the Map, which we recommend strongly. Here we are going to be defining each area of analysis for the church and we are going to be focusing on the goals for analysis. In moving off the map you can find key questions and strategies for each subsystem. It's a very detailed book so what we are going to be doing on this video is just an overview of the process. So let's talk first about the foundational subsystems. Congregational identity is like an umbrella under which all aspects of local church life and ministries are embraced. It is a living identity, both intentionally and unintentionally revealed through our different programs of the church. And newcomers perceive and evaluate this identity. The goal for analyzing our identity is what that basic umbrella of congregational life really is. Two, how that identity is celebrated, articulated, and tested. And third, to what degree your congregational leaders demonstrate such identity. Here we need to define congregational mission. Congregational mission relates to everything the congregation does for people other than themselves. There is a direct correspondence between the degree to which the congregation is engaged with people beyond themselves and the growth and health of the congregation. The goal of our mission analysis is to discern what is absolutely unique and vital in your own mission and it arises from your experience of Jesus the Christ. Second, the nature and degree of congregational involvement with people beyond the church. And third, the nature and degree of leadership engagement with the unchurch. Regarding congregational organization, we can define it as the structure through which the identity is articulated and the mission of the church is released. There is no single blueprint for an effective organization, but there is a direct correlation between the degree of readiness to take risk on creative ideas and the growth and health of a church. The goal of organization analysis is to discern the ability of the structure to distinguish between control and stability, the readiness of the congregation to build respect and trust for leadership, and the commitment of leadership to a feasible, positive, long-range plan. Let's turn our sight now to functional subsystems. The thriving church seeks to help people experience the continuing transforming power of God as that power touches the hearts and changes lives. They remove all barriers that inhibit rapid immersion into spirituality, correct information, institutional awareness, and membership recruitment are all secondary to the healing touch of God. The goal of experience analysis is to discern how newcomers are welcomed not only into the church but into an experience of the holy. How worshipers get involved not in an educational mind but into an affair of the heart and how participants are immediately nurtured, how they network institutional support and how they move toward mentoring relationships. The thriving church perceives membership as a covenant, a covenant to go deeper in faith, 
to discern the true origins and purposes behind the changes they are experiencing in life. Church membership moves most people in processes of intimacy, mutual support, and personal growth. Acquisition of basic religious information by children is secondary to the discovery of God, self, and worth of others by adults. The goal of growth analysis is to discern to what degree and by what means adults in your church go deep in faith. How many options for children and youth faith development exist in your church? And how prepared your church leaders are to share personal space with seekers and coach adult maturing in faith? Listening to God The thriving church seeks to move people from spiritual maturity to ministry. The fullness of spiritual maturity is not achieved until an individual celebrates new life through the exercise of gifts at the direction of Christ and for the benefit of others. Thriving churches provide multiple diverse ways of listening to God's call. They are prepared to risk creative ideas and original projects. Recruitment for institutional management is secondary to motivating individuals for faith sharing and service. The goal of listening analysis is to discern the real measure of Christian maturity assumed by your church, the degree of readiness for creativity in your congregation, and the number of intentional design options the church provides people to discover their own calling by Christ. The thriving church also equips people for excellence. They prioritize energy to train individuals to do, with the highest quality possible, whatever it is Christ calls them to do. They never just accept the best volunteers can offer. They also assist volunteers to achieve their highest potential of service. The goal of service analysis is to discern the degree of control or permission that the congregation exercises upon potential ministries related to the church, the number of ministries and services already being done by participants in the church, and the effectiveness of support given by the congregation for each one, the readiness of the staff to be trainers rather than doers of ministry. Sharing God, the thriving church, bonds a deepening personal spirituality with multiple outreach ministries. No faith sharing happens without practical service to others, and no social service happens without sharing the transforming power of Christ. The congregation does not pay experts to do ministry. They equip themselves to do ministry. Ultimately, the goal of helping other people is secondary. Their goal is to invite others to participate in the same cycle of change, growth, discernment, training, and ministry that they experience in Christ through the thriving church. They know that meaningful living is not achieved in the receiving of bread, but in the giving of bread. The goal of share analysis is to discern the real connection between spirituality and social service made by participants in the congregation, the real diversity of faith sharing and service that actually exists among participants in the congregation, and also the strategies the church employs to listen to the yearnings of the public and to invite the public into the life cycle of the thriving church. Finally, let's see some formal subsystems. The thriving church property proclaims the vision in every possible way. The church locates, designs, and utilizes property to make participation in the life cycle of change, growth, discernment, training, and ministry as easy and as effective as possible. Their property is visible, accessible, and hospitable to strangers. Property is never identified with heritage, but with ministry. The goal of property analysis is to discern how church property proclaims your vision, the degree to which property, location, and design helps or hinders 
your ministries and the changes that need to be made to property for the church to grow. Funding. The thriving church always links its financial expectations and opportunities and ministries. They never raise money just for the purpose of preserving heritage. They always raise money to benefit other people, to help people experience positive change and growth in their lives, to help people discern their destiny in Christ, to help people be trained and exercise quality ministry. The thriving church encourages financial generosity in a year-round strategy. They offer multiple options and multiple methods for giving. The goal of our funding analysis is to discern how your church values money, how your church communicates financial expectations and participants, and also what options, methods, and patterns of giving are available to participants and how your church connects money and ministry. It's very important to have credibility and we must earn people's credibility. Credibility is gained by translating the maximum portion of every dollar into direct, personal and clearly visible benefits in the world. In the eyes of the spirituality yearning public Results count more than the liturgies, and motivation is vastly more important than information. The thriving church is in constant communication with both participants and the public. So much is happening at church, so much creative energy is being released, and so much good news are emerging, then frequent updates are necessary. This helps avoid confusion, misunderstanding, and potential conflict. It also opens multiple avenues of introduction into the congregation. This thriving church must communicate often because it is never quite the same from one moment to the next. The goal of communication analysis is to discern how the congregation communicates with the public, how the congregation communicates with church participants, and how well lay leaders facilitate such communication. And this is the end of our second video. Look forward for our third and final video on moving off the map from vision to strategic planning.